It is currently summer, which is, uh, for anyone in academia, summer is uh, the point where we catch up on any research we were supposed to do during the rest of the year, but we couldn't because we were teaching. And as a bit of a PhD update, uh, I'm having to rewrite my introduction, my methodology, and my literature review. Now, it's not because the previous drafts were bad, it's just that the more you research, the more you find stuff that you need to include. And the more you need to talk about it. So I'm doing like a quick PhD update in case anyone is actually interested in this stuff. Which also means holding a camera to my own notes, which means you can see how sloppy my handwriting gets uh, at two in the morning. Because this was at two in the morning and then I think this was and this was and then I picked it back up here this morning. But uh, I wanted to explain like a couple things that I thought would be interesting just to the comic community. So um, in my methodology you see that I've got quantitative and then over here I've got qualitative. The two approaches you can take with your methodology are quantitative and qualitative. I know I say that weird but that's just me. Quantitative is something based on uh, a quantifiable amount of data and qualitative is like taking a specific set of data to look through. So in the case of quantitative, I'm literally doing like a panel count, a page count, how many times something appears in there, and I'm using the work of Neil Cohen to do it. Neil Cohen's a very fascinating figure in comics research. He talks about, um, I guess if you follow NerdSync, when he did an emoji video like years ago now, um, Neil Cohen's the kind of guy who would actually research that stuff and say, okay, well, what is implied by this emoji and stuff like that? But he takes it straight to comics and he will th do things like counting the amount of times an element appears. He will also use eye tracking software to figure out how someone is reading the page naturally and will take all that data, compare it, and will find basically how comics work based on that. From my qualitative, um, Approach. I'm using two people, Karen Kokonen and Pascal Lefebvre. I always want to say Lefebvre because I know it's a French name, but apparently it's Lefebvre. That's fine. Uh, I'm terrible at pronouncing names, so that's fine. Lefebvre takes this approach where he considers uh, the panel as the amount of space shown on... Like, the space shown within the panel. So, say you've got a street... I'm trying to look for a comic around me to use. Surprisingly, there are plenty. I'm gonna pause. So the closest comic to me was The Dark Tower, which is signed by Robin Firth, which I love. Uh, so, for example, let's see if we can use an appropriate page. Okay, so... Yeah, you're just kind of getting a view of this. Okay, so let's use this double page spread. The space shown within here, and yeah, you can see how it up my hands are. The space shown here shows uh, a tank rolling over some bodies and all we can tell is that the background is like reddish. It's clearly some kind of smoke, it might be the sky at evening, but this is all the space that's shown within the panel. What Lefebvre looks at is not only the space that's in the panel, but the space implied by the panel. So for example, you've got this body here, it would be implied that the rest of his body is out of frame over here, and the rest of the tank would be over here. And considering the amount of bodies all piled up here, you would assume there are then even more bodies off screen, off, uh, I'm gonna say off screen, even though it's off panel. But this is the kind of thing that Lefebvre looks at, which is very fascinating, because uh, the typical example I use is The Dark Knight Returns. That scene where you've got uh, Batman stood in the middle, you've got the lamp, uh, the lamp just above him and Superman flying. Don't worry, I'm using the back of pen. I'm not marking this. And you can see, like, the streets going down. And there's a load of space implied by that. You can probably tell that the streets go on past just the panel border. You can tell the sky is above Superman, even though the sky isn't shown properly. So, yes. Uh, that's uh, that's work. I do recommend these. I think the whole collection's behind me, but yeah, off topic. But yeah, that's my current update. 
So what you usually have to do when you're writing um, your thesis, which is a weird thing to think about really, is uh, you have to sort of introduce what it is you're looking at. So in this case, so what am I studying? These are literally questions for myself, um, just because you have to write a comprehension style. So I'm looking at superhero comics, specifically DC specific superhero comics. Uh, what area? Well, I'm looking at how uh, artists and writers use techniques and how they've changed when talking about time. These are my research questions. How will the uh, information be presented? Each question will have a dedicated chapter. Will images be used? Yes, following DC's guidelines, because I emailed them a while ago to ask what the guidelines were. Then in your methodology, you're sort of saying, well, here is how I'm going to approach these. Here are the... Um, theorists I'm going to use and then basically how I'm going to arrive to my information so yeah since I'm rewriting like the early stages of it I thought this would be interesting to show people and if you're wondering why this page is slightly crumpled it's because there's like a super wide prime card there I don't know why I put it there it just sort of worked yeah I'm on a bit of an intertextuality kick even though that's only going to be like one chapter out of the whole thing. But yeah, if you see me talking about intertextuality, it's because I'm a weirdo and that's sort of one of the chapters. But yeah, progress. I'm very tired.